Good morning, chat. Good morning, chat. Sunday morning, we wake up. We go to tech. Made it through tech swimmingly. Get to Pueblo, we addressed a, a few things, uh, power on the engine, gearing, and suspension. All three of those things, first lap out, showed positive movements in every direction. So it gave us a lot of hope. The car sounded great. I was watching Ken come out of this first gear hair pin, or before it was bogging, and this thing was just digging in. It looked like it was almost like pulling the front inside tire off the ground. And I watched him into a corner, wide open throttle, thing just sat back and he went through three gears just, and the car was still turning, just everything looked great. Came back in, tires looked good, but there was a sound. When Derek and I were standing there, the car came by under full throttle, sounded great. And then when he drove by us, going back to the pits, I, like it's something like, that could get a pit in my stomach. I had an issue yesterday with um with uh, over revving of the engine, unfortunately, which damaged it, and um, we paid the price and uh, had our test cut short, which was a big drama because we'd just made some good progress with gear ratios. And then uh, this morning we've had the same thing happen on the other bank of cylinders, so it's curtailed our testing, so it's really uh, puts us on the back foot completely. comes back and he's happy, it's good. We've uh, turned a corner, so big effort to get here. So brilliant result. Let's just see if we can uh, push on with that today and uh, carry on successfully. That guy's so unhappy about most things. <laughs> that or it's just his, this is. Unfortunately, right at about midway up his first run, car sounded great, leaving the line, everything sounded good. And when he came back down, I heard it. The car was running on five cylinders, it sounded angry. I was like, damn it. Uh, but he drove it down. He was like, he, he's like, yeah, it just has a misfire, you know? I heard it and I was like, oh, we're done. Um, so we loaded the car back up, got back down here and just immediately tore into the car. We find out the engine's broken and from a hopeful standpoint, I start racking my brain. The whole team starts putting their heads together. Well, what, what is it going to take to fix this? We knew we needed a head because the, we knew that head was scrapped. We knew, knew we needed a piston. We, we lost the turbo because a chunk of the valve took it out. And these are one-off turbos that Garrett made. Just so happens they made some extra parts, so there was hope. Uh, I was like, okay, we, we, can, we can do this. So Derek met me here at 2 a.m. And we, we saw the scoring on the cylinder, and there's a big dent right in the middle, two big dents. One is far down the bore, which I could live with, but the other one was in the, really in the quench, right in the, the, part, the tight part of the compression cycle, or the compression stroke. I'm like, we, we can't run this. this I, I've tried it before. I know what happens. It's really trick, trick uh, to try and get everything lined up with a uh, with prototype car. So normally we, we, we have like a eight month period, we've done it in four months. And you really you need all that, all the all the stars to line up to make sure it works. It's it's uh, you have to pay respect to this hill, and if you if you one step out, it'll bite you. And it's really bitten us really hard. And uh, you know, feel sorry for everybody that supported it and everybody that's put all the effort into it. Um, 
but um, we don't want to give up, but it's, you know, we're struggling at the moment big time to just make it a, a safe option for Ken, you know, to get him up the hill, and uh, to do justice to the amount of effort people put in. So the good news is we have a year to think about this thing, develop it further, build a spare engine, and just look back at what we've learned in the last five, six months, apply that to the next year, so we'll come back stronger and better. Uh, I'm not mad about it. I'm just, this was, I was supposed to retire from Pikes Peak this year, and uh, that's not going to happen. BBI's Huna Pig is one of the standout builds of 2022 and it didn't all go completely smoothly which is great because as enthusiasts not all of our projects go smoothly either. We're here at SEMA with Betim from BBI Autosport to talk a little bit more about this car. So there's a lot of information already out about this car. I don't want to right. try and follow everything that's already been done, but let, let's just start with the beginning. Obviously, you're a, you're a Porsche expert through and through. Oh, getting there. <laughs> when Sorry. it came to this particular build, how, how did it even come about in the first place? What a sick accent, bro. I want one. I want one. Good, uh, great question. This this build actually is, is a, the brainchild of a guy named Joe Scarbo. And he, he showed me this drawing about eight years ago of wanting to take an early 911, make it all-wheel drive, and he had it designed with an STI engine in it in the back. And then, you know, it was, I was like, I love the concept, but don't do that. <laughs> that engine won't fly? I mean, I respect those engines a lot. The EJs are great, whatever. But I just said, don't do that. We're going to do a Porsche-powered one one day. And then we just kept talking about it, talking about it. And then soon it became... A, a packaging thing. So he had eight or nine inch wheels in the rear and eight in the front and couldn't get the car low enough because the wheels actually hit some of the body lines. And so I said, just push them out. And then it morphed into this, this car. And then we started looking at what, if we were going to build this, because it's supposed to be a street car at first, if we're going to build this, I want to go compete at Pike Speak with it. So we started designing a Pike Speak racer. And up hmm. until about two months before we were about to pull the trigger on the project, we made the decision to move the engine from the rear to the middle. And it's because I, we wanted to do an all-wheel drive system, and I wanted to run a square setup. I wanted to run the 1813's front, 1813's rear, and then it became, well, now if we move the engine in the middle, we can extend the wheelbase a little bit. So we went from 89 inches to 101. Let's just stop there because there's a bunch of stuff that you've already talked about that I don't want to forget about and I do want to jump into. Okay. So so one of the more recent things you've just mentioned there is going from rear engine to mid-engine. Now, Porsche have been famous in, in sort of battling this physics problem mm -hmm. with all of the weight of the engine being rearward of the, the axle line for, right. for decades. They're well known for it and by all accounts, they seem to have got it pretty well right. Yeah. But ultimately, there is still performance to be gained in swapping that around mid-engine, getting the weight of that engine forward of the axle line. Right. Yeah. Um, in 2007, I drove a Cayman for the first time. And it didn't feel like a 911, but it felt, it, it just, it, it felt, I, I don't want to say this, but it felt a little more proper. It felt like, and I hate saying that, all the purists out there, but it just, it, it, it dawned on me. I'm like, yeah, that just makes sense. Get the mass in the center of the car keep it low you know and since then i really wanted to always that we we've tried back in the day we tried building a cayman we were extending the wheelbase a little bit and putting a 911 engine in it and that project kind of got stopped so it's always we're always trying to inch up to doing that and the one challenge okay there was a few challenges but one of the challenges of us putting the engine in the middle was how do you take a horizontally posed flat six with a low cg and run a drive shaft past it that was, it's an obvious issue, correct? Yeah, it's an issue. You don't want to raise the engine. Uh, there's no room. You have the turbos, and then you have the tunnels right underneath the engine for the for the diffuser. And that that's also another reason why it made more sense to put the engine in the middle is because we can run a real efficient, nice diffuser in the floor. I, I have always looked at the the stock Porsche setup and, and and figured that that really does limit you with the engine there on what you could do with the diffuser. So yeah, absolutely makes sense. Yeah, and that that I think with Porsche, aside from the mass. The aero benefits of having the engine there uh, is tremendous because you have such a, a, a more clean run and a way more efficient flow path on that lower diffuser without the sharp angles. Right, coming back to the the base car that you chose, I mean, it's hard to really say what it is now because there's not a lot of factory Porsche that, that is still intact there. Right. 
but I mean, clearly it's an older style, earlier 911, which on face value I, I wouldn't think is the most aerodynamic based mm, shoes no. compared to you know, maybe a later 991, 992 shape. So right. what was the, the driving of the testing you just mentioned at Porsche's own facility? Mm. Uh, so the way we, we tune in the aftermarket... Uno, uno, unofficially. Uh, unofficially, ob obviously. Uh, the, the way we tune and test in the aftermarket, I mean, the, the engine might get a, a, a dozen sort of 10 or 12 second pulls on the dyno. That's quite different to how OEs actually do durability mm. testing. Can you give us some insight into what you're going to put this engine through? They, they do a durability test schedule for the, the normally aspirated version of this engine, which we're going to go after, because I want to see the whole system work. But they, it's uh, equivalent to 20,000 kilometers, and it's across a 24-hour period. And it's they have, well, they won't tell me, but they have a, an entire cycle of ramping it up, down, full throttle. We should have not ran it. But we were there. We're going to go for it. Oh. Well, hindsight, so as 2020. I know. I know. And so it's All still right. painful to re rehash that. But... Um, of the testing you just mentioned at Porsche's own facility. Mm -hmm. uh, so the way we, we tune in the aftermarket... Uno, uno, unofficially. Uh, unofficially, obviously. The, the normally aspirated version of this engine is which we're going to go after because I want to see the whole system work. But they, it's uh, equivalent to 20,000 kilometers and it's across a 24-hour period. And it's they have... Well, they won't tell me, but they have a, an entire cycle of ramping it up, down, full throttle, peak RPM. I think that's almost eight minutes. See, they want to see temperatures normalize. They want to make sure that everything is. They, they, at the end of the day, it's heat, right? And it's. I. I'm with this engine. I'm almost imagining how fast do you want to go for how long? And it really is a thermal, it's a thermal shedding uh, equation there. So they're going to see where where things normalize at, and if we have to address something, we will. But um, usually, usually, I'm nervous, but we have to do it. I guess the upside of this is if you can pass that test, you can probably be pretty confident Ken or anyone else can throw anything they've got at it yep. and uh, the engine at least is going to be pretty oh, happy there. Yeah, absolutely. And that that's also going to give Sam yes. and Oscar the opportunity to spend some time with it because I feel bad. They, as, as we were... The upside is we're here at SEMA and it's November 2022. You've, you've got about eight months now, right, right. seven months before Pikes Peak mm -hmm. in 2023. Right. So it sounds like you've got plenty of time, but of course... I mean, this is kind of the crown jewel of the collection. At the time, this was the peak rallying in the US. It's the jump seats that came with the handles. This looks like an amusement park ride. Why would you have that in the car with you? Wait, there's more. Why would you have that in the car with you? Why? <laughs> uh, Here we are in beautiful, scenic, just outside of Camden, New Jersey, on an excellent day. And other than the signature blue color on this door, there isn't really anything here to say what's up. Are you men ready? Did we get fed? No, it's, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Ura! 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 Are we, uh, done? Uh. Did not feel anything. See the Mad King to brain. Oh, it was good shooting montage, though. It was the best. <laughs> oh, man.
am Grantham. P P. We got a flare. We got a flare. We got a flare. Maybe the airdrop will give me a bag to put things in. <laughs> How's it going, Forgotten? Hope you're doing well today. I'm doing all right. I can't complain. Much. You're okay today as long as no one calls you. I mean, I, I'm okay any day as long as no one calls me. Fucking hate talking on the phone. It's terrible. Never liked it. of your life <laughs> glory to hear that fuck there's guns in this Gib gun. Gib guns. Gib. Ugh. Where are my guns? Guns. Guns, Nikita. Guns.
No guns. Gun? Gun? Okay, bud. Let me get all his skills. And there's that, yeah. Yeah. Some people will never be good at the game. That's all right. It's all right. Some people are just perfectly fine being dog shit at life. I just don't know. Who the fuck uses impact grenades like that? Whatever, bro. GG's. I just got a lax. Off my scav. Thank you, Nikita. I really needed that. Because I'm poor. I'm dying to all these dog shit gamers that you let in your game, Nikita. Bad shot. Too sleepy, you need something to boost you up. Get some coffee. Or develop a meth addiction. I don't know. It's whatever your prerogative is. Never be sleepy again. Uh, da, 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 da. Basically, don't use airdrops on interchange. What I learned there. I'll never drop another one on the map.
gross. Well, there is that. I am poor. Too poor to do anything I want to do. Get high doing lines of coffee. Um, it's actually fairly common with uh, instant coffee in some settings. How's it going, chilled? Hope you're doing well this morning. I already died. Not on my um, character, on my scav. Some fucking loser. Throwing impact nades at a goddamn airdrop on interchange. Fucking dog shit. Yep, just waiting on your replacement wheelchair. Gotta love it. Ooh, guys, on the plus side, I got all of the fruit trees cut yesterday. All of them. All remaining 13. Uh, drugs, intoxication, or excessive tobacco use. Yeah, we got that in here. Just gonna leave it on the video game. We've got we've got content labels on uh, Twitch now for our streams. I don't know how I would feel about having all of them selected outside of the sexual content. I don't know. I'm pretty fucking sexy. Maybe I should, because I'm a sex symbol. I ooze sexual energy. Uh, Fucking loser. You're so dog shit. Cap, the hot tub streamer. Yeah, that's all I'm good at. Sitting in a hot tub. Can't do much.
19 Bison. Uh, there are not a whole lot of examples of this particular weapon in the US. In fact, fewer that uh, have a happy switch on them. Yes. So we're very proud uh, today on Grantham to be able to show this weapon. And it is actually Micah's favorite weapon. So we're gonna try to make sure that he does that to Charlotte as she needs to do that. Because um, no like one would care that she sucks at games. I mean, that's fair like point. The, the, the climax. Yeah, how is it by the way having the I like. so less sweaty? I don't know what you're talking about. I killed the last guy. Bison. The bison. But before we get into that, we have to thank the biggest sponsor. I don't know what you're talking about. I killed the last guy. Oh, yeah, sorry. That's the uh this is the guy that's always wearing the um baklava. What of examples of this particular weapon they are the people to go to we cannot thank them there for aren't that. chapters or maybe you can make your own bison if you if you try hard enough we have to thank who micah are you doing only when i just go the full step i mean uh, great optics great price and we can't thank you're not wrong you do a lot of awesome stuff for the channel it has and, openings uh, hot is, tub streamers uh, lemongrass lemongrass you get like like you know from jamba juice lemongrass yeah shot. lemongrass july but we do love them go give them our support and of course unlike the camera that this is filmed on unlike the uh, tv that you're watching this on aac ammunition is made in the united states and we cannot thank them enough for sponsoring the ammunition of this channel now before we get into it i do want to note that this pp19 bison is not given to us uh there's no exchange of money uh, i was built by a private builder and um turkish coffee anyone is not it's not something to drink on your own i don't know anything about it I'm spelling that wrong. It says you can find the ground coffee beans without filtering. Um, it makes something like that in South America as well. Marcus Hell strong as death. Hmm. Curious. The ammunition was purchased by us, so there's no really. Uh... Is OnlyFans profitable? She makes as much as she would do a full time job. Fuck, I need to do some OnlyFans. Uh, there's no biases there, right, Micah? We're not state sponsored by Russia or anything like that. So uh, the bias on is what you get, and we'll uh, give our honest opinions on the weapons as we always do. So talk is cheap, and ammunition is what, Micah? Uh, brought by AEC, but purchased by ourselves painstakingly yeah. for this one. Yeah, so. because they don't make 9x18 Mac. Let's get into it. Because right. they don't <laughs> make 9x18. Very, uh... Coolest gun ever? You know, you did say that about the DSS. It's like we keep upping the ante. I think this is cool. This is pretty cool. Very... I will, you know, I will say... Yeah. With the, Helico the VSS. The VSS. Right. Yes. He's actually not wrong. The man's got a point. You want to explain the first drill that we're going to do? Yeah, we're going to do a as tight of a grouping as you can on the fast firing setting. How many rounds would you like to do? Six rounds. Six rounds. I was going to do it for some jokes. The Cobra is one of the worst optics, by the way. I, I feel uh... not bad at all saying that. Axion Cobra. 
We actually might have one on one of these guns. Oh god. What are you talking about? And it's got the eye shade on it. Eye cut. Right there. Got a different shade on it, though. And the lens. Oh, never mind. Because it, it was over green, it looked blue. Pretty close. Yeah. Okay, how many did I fire before? Four? Four? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, that's six. That's a nice grouping right there. That's a fist. Stand by. Yeah. Right. Full malfunction. So he has, uh, he has four on target. You had a malfunction. Are you ready? Yeah. Stand by. Mm. Woo -hoo. That's six. Because I did four one, before. Two, three, four. Because one, two, three, four, this is one, two, three, six. Michael! Stand by. Oh! Oh no! Oh! 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 That's pretty good. I, I, I'm going to declare myself the hey, winner. You know what? Champion. You, you know what this is? What? It's an A. For administrative for results. For administrative results. Oh. So, uh, this drill's gonna be pretty simple. We're gonna start from the two rocks right here. You're going to one, two, so one round per. You're going to turn left, which is impossible for all of us. And as you walk, or you can stay still if you really want to, depending on how you want to run the drill. You're gonna one, two, one, two, one, two. Run to the pole, and then you're gonna do two shots on the left target down there. Nice, with uh, one Charlie. Yep. PP Bison incoming. In 46. Nice. nice. A lot of mics, a lot of mics. Let's Smoked it. Mics. You have a Delta. I have a Delta, yeah. Uh, Get a kit real quick. Line break, that's good. <laughs> One delta. Because we're dog shit at this game. Uh, so, point two, point two. Delta would be like what? I don't know. Who do you want to do for delta? Delta. Um, what's one kiss on the cheek for your homies? Come on. Oh my bad, I got yeah, really excited. Yeah. Rewind back. Yeah, yeah. Line break, alpha, two I'm alpha. Really excited. Delta. You know what, guys? Maybe the real drills of the bison were the friendships that we strengthened along the way. The hostages we executed in the clearing. The bison's really cool for a whole lot of reasons, but I think one of the coolest reasons is that there's not a whole lot of information on it. And there, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, Obviously, uh, in general, Russians are not going to tell us a whole lot about their weapons development. And also, the PP-19, the Bison, is, wasn't a terribly successful weapon in that... Нет, 
нажать бы, конечно, вообще не помешало бы это. There's a player that just left there, or he's back in there still. Not really sure there. killing things for fun. Soccer's well trigger, I'll be back soon. Alright, bud. Шкура цела уже неплохо, а?
А, вот тут, короче, друган мой бывал точно. Зачем, блядь, чё? I don't know why I'm taking all this stuff. Don't at me. Don't at me. right about now. Right back. We're gonna go back and uh hunt these bastards. I went in at the wrong time slot. It Enjoy was the video, I'll be back. Somewhat quickly. So the bison was replaced by what would become the Vityaz, the PP1901. Uh, this one is of course massively kind of modified, but it was a more traditional design and more compatible with a lot of AK parts compared to the Bison, which was more complex, but in many ways, a little bit more, in some ways, more forward thinking. So we're gonna talk about this very fascinating Russian weapon. There's not a whole lot of examples in the US and fewer still, I would say this is perhaps one of the few, 
that uh, have a really fun, fast trigger setting. The PP19 Bison is a blowback operated 9x18 um, chambered weapon. So 9x18, a little bit weaker than 9mm, not by much, uh, but it does impart a really soft recoil. The system as a whole, despite being blowback operated, which usually imparts a little bit more recoil than you kind of want from such a small pistol caliber weapon, um, is, is soft due, due to the fact that it's 9x18. A little bit anemic in my opinion, however, obviously we're still able to make fairly long shots with it. I imagine 200 yards wouldn't be much of a problem, though you're not delivering much energy at that point. A couple notes that, that there is some parts compatibility with a standard AK-74. So we see that mostly in the fire control system, in the grip, and the stock. Um, otherwise, uh, in stark contrast to the PP-19 Vityaz, the uh, receiver, uh, the trunnion, uh, is quite different from your typical AKs. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. Just like your standard AKs, we do have a detent right here. Obviously, you could mount any amount of suppressors on here. There's not a suppressor specific for the Vityaz that is made in the US, but uh, from there, we have our front sight post. Uh, you have your standard AK adjustments right there. Not a whole lot to speak about. Now, a lot of people will look at this and say, okay, clearly there is a gas system under there. We'll go ahead and we'll disprove you right here. All right, pull that little guy off right there. Give it a little bit of wiggle. And we have <laughs> obviously no gas system. It is direct blowback, just in case you guys didn't believe us. Um, so we have a simple guide to make sure that everything is right in those rails and doing good things. But otherwise, we have a simple blowback system, which is a very effective, a very reliable system, and uh, is probably one of the more popular systems in use in submachine guns, just because it works. So we have our sling loops right here. And then of course we have what everybody wants to talk about and that is going to be the magazine. So these are a helical design right here. As you can see, when I twist this, as you can see, this is helical. So when I twist that, I can get each round in. You can see each of those little spaces for the rounds to seat in. It's a unorthodox design and uh, probably in many ways contributed to the uh, Bison ultimately not being a, a very well-liked or kind of well-adopted weapon. So when you're loading it in, it's a very odd procedure. You can see we have these pins right here on either side of the receiver. So we have hooks on the magazine right there. As you can see, you're going to get those hooks in place. Then I'm going to, just like an AK, you have that latch right there. I'm going to make sure that's lined up, press that into place, make sure that is nice and seated. And then at that point, of course, I could rack the weapon and get the round in the chamber. It is, I'm sure with more time on it, I could get better at it. It is a, um, I can't imagine this- Call of Duty is bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. I can't imagine um, being under fire, under duress, and you know, you go dry and you're like, oh, cover me comrade. And you're like, oh God, as you're trying to get that- That, that was the actually, best one you've done. That was actually pretty good because I have so much time on it right now. But uh, it, it's, it's just, there's that very fine movement. And I'm not a person who's gonna say that you can't do fine movement um, in stressful situations, but uh, it, if you're, Magazine is easier to insert. That's going to make your life much easier. So we'll show the Vyaz, uh, we'll show the Vityaz in comparison. So we compare that to the Vityaz, which is a more traditional AK design. Stick mag out, stick mag in, and then you're simply going to rack that system, and you're going to be charged. Just, just easier, man. Just kind of a real pain to load. I would. How, the idea is you just don't have to reload. Exactly, because you have so many rounds. And you do have quite a few. Um, we can't say the amount of rounds that we have, but you can see that they are marked on the magazine right there. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna show you on this older magazine right here, which is the metal one. You can see those rounds as I rotate those over. How you can load those. It is a pain in the butt to load, it is not fun. Now, also, you can lock these. Um, a lot of people have incorrectly, when they're operating the Bison, put that magazine into lock position. So you'll get a few rounds that will feed, and then uh, it will no longer feed. So again, to unlock that magazine, just like an AK, you're going to press up on that latch, you can get it out, and then load it back in. So that is our basic mechanism for the magazine. We've talked about that enough. Let's move over to the other controls. Otherwise, the Bison is very similar to the Vityaz or vice versa because this came before the Vityaz. Again, this was produced in about 1993 and served for uh, about to the early 2000s before you saw the introduction of the Vityaz, which ended up taking over. So we have our safety right here. We have safe, we have really, really fast, and then we have semi. Standard selector positions for an AK. We, of course, have our charging handle there, a little bit shorter than your typical AK charging handle. Um, but otherwise very functional. If we move over to the left-hand side, 
We, of course, do have an optic on this particular weapon. We do have a Cobra optic. There is a side optic rail right here, so those can be mounted. Uh, I want to note again that the Cobra is one of my least favorite optics, and that's there's nothing you can do to change my mind. Um, from there, let's go ahead. Let's show Ghost in that trigger right here. This is a standard AK trigger, not a whole lot to talk about, but kind of going into it, we have our first stage, nice little roll, and we have that typical AK let off, short reset right there, very positive. I love AK triggers, man. They are nice, about five pounds, but feels a lot less because it is very crisp. Moving from there, we have our standard AK grip, so those can, of course, be changed out to whatever you want. And then we have our triangular folder. This, of course, can this button can be depressed right here. And then if I do that correctly, then you can fold that to the side. Being that we do have an optic there that is not going to fold completely and lock into place, can fold that over to the side, lock that into place. And that makes for a very compact package right there, easy to transport around. To get that off, we're simply going to push up on it, and then we can unlatch it lock that into place and we have our good old bison. I was not sure what I was gonna think of this particular weapon. I've obviously seen it in Call of Duty. I've seen it in every video game. This is my first time getting uh, hands-on time with it. And uh, it is a very soft shooter. It is very easy to keep on target. That nine by 18 definitely lends itself to a weapon of this type. I like it. I ultimately, I like it. Uh, Submachine guns do have their place and I could certainly see how this would be fun, especially with the magazine capacity that we have that is a nice little bit of kind of firepower that you have there it's definitely kind of in that same vein of like the p90 with kind of the odd magazine type and i hate the p90 and how you load the mag and this definitely takes the cake for one of the worst loading magazines that we've ever uh put our hands on would you agree with that Agreed. yeah it, it's just absolutely balls to the wall terrible <sighs> i think it's cool it, it's, sick. it's sick it's cool um this is unfortunately a weapon that you're probably not going to be able to easily get your hands on there are a few builders in the u.s but maybe if we ask palmetto <laughs> maybe palmetto will make one you never know aaron what did you think of the bison so bison pretty neat pretty call of duty very gamerish um biggest downfall biggest downfall i haven't been drinking your honor but i will drive so the biggest downfall has probably been the mag catch back here just working that makes it how fast can you reload a cup oh god <laughs> $3,000 mag. That fast. That's actually pretty good. That was impressive. Thank you. Thank under, you. Under pressure, I can be decent. Under pressure. This is actually Micah's favorite gun. He was super excited kind to do this. Kind of all of all time. Like, I, I'm pretty biased because I think this is literally my favorite gun of all time. You said that about the DSS, I, I, too. I, I, no, I didn't say of all time. I said it was the coolest one we've done yet. Fair. But uh, I think that, you know, Counter-Strike, I use this just to troll with, you know, all the Call of Duties. I always use the Bison, even if it wasn't the best gun. Uh, every video game that had it, I always ran the Bison. It's just one of those guns where no matter whether it was a piece of shit or a great gun, I was gonna love it no matter what. And I, and I do. The vibe. Yes. A little, little bummed out at how hard it is to load. I don't really want to shoot it just because I don't want to load it. So guys, thank you so much for uh, watching today. If there's anything that we could say, it's you can get good with any weapon system. So just because you can get on a Bison doesn't I have to add tags to my name to my stream or or it's against pos matter train with what you have get good we appreciate you guys watching as always stay cool out there get training from lots of great places and uh we've got nothing else for you today So the Texas Suppressor Freedom case, which aims to stop the NFA and ATS regulation of suppressors, had a hearing last week. So let's talk about this. I don't want to do it. I hate it. I hate going in with NVGs trying to kill these fucking guys. It's so nerve wracking.
Where do I want to go, guys? Where do I want to go? Where, where am I going? Um, reserve, lighthouse, streets, custom. We're gonna go to woods. Before you this video, if you think the NFA and the GCA need to be done away with, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to give a shout out to one of the main supporters of this channel, which is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training educated block. This is an important and interesting case, and now we had oral arguments that took place last week on cross motions for summary judgment. Now, for those not aware of what this lawsuit entails and what this arises out of, this is a lawsuit in regards to Texas House Bill 957 which was passed recently in the state of Texas. HB 957 exempted silencers which are manufactured in Texas and which remain exclusively within the state, and it seeks to remove them from federal firearms regulations, including the federal firearms registration and taxation on BNFA. The claim behind this law is that since these items are made and sold exclusively within a state, they do not fall under interstate commerce and therefore fall outside of the purview of federal regulation by the ATF. In the original complaint, the state of Texas argued that federal regulation of these items that are made and stayed within the state of Texas is not permitted since this law does not impact interstate commerce. They also argued that federal regulation of these items by the ATF drastically impacts Second Amendment rights and that it's also an impermissible tax on a right. The state's arguments were later strengthened when the Supreme Court issued their New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin decision. Now, multiple times in this case, the ATF tried to avoid this burden by arguing that the Second Amendment is not implicated in this case at all because in their eyes, in their view, suppressors are not bearable arms and therefore are not protected. Now we all read judgment. In simplest terms, a summary judgment motion can resolve the dispute of a case without a full trial taking place. Both Texas and the ATF had filed for cross motions for summary judgment, which means that both of the sides, both the state of Texas and the ATF, of firearm suppressors in its definition of firearm the ATF argues that the Second Amendment does not have <laughs> Shit. That is obviously not what I wanted to do.
Someone's already been here, looks like. <clears throat> Rotate around like this. Um, check this side for this uh, other scab or player or whatever it was that was shooting at me. Up by here, I thought. It was a scab. That's good.
Homeboy was eating. You were eating my bullets, my dude. Don't appreciate that at all.
That's 338 Lapua. Homies out here dealing hate. I'd be dead. But we'll throw a grenade anyway. Lagged a little bit. Sturman. 
no bloodhounds here. And no loot. And milk out. Just Lapua guy. Ignore the armpits on this shirt. They're permanent. Permanent stains. I've had this shirt for a long time. The scabs are back. Scabs are back. Basically, I lost like four bill yesterday, mostly in sites. Durability drops far too fast. Popular opinion, maybe, but what am I missing? I don't have an SJ six. For shits and giggles, I guess. We will wear it for shits and giggles. Because we know it's not going to save our life. the song.
да и что, нормально? Yeah, that's why we let him. Or you're gonna get him while we're in the raid. Unless I die. Which is a possibility. Very well. Could just die. Pretty often. <laughs> Lately. Today. For sure.
Why can't I do this? Does the launcher have to be ran as the... This is the longest I've waited for a raid in days. Actually, like days, literally. I have to come back over to American servers just so I don't have to wait fucking four and a half minutes to get into a raid. Yeah, I added, I, I keep adding categories because I have to add the categories. Yeah, yeah, I had to add categories, sorry. Every time I change that, it makes you say, okay. It shouldn't do it any longer anymore, unless you like refresh your page. I shouldn't do it randomly anymore, let's put it that way. It's a new thing that they've added. We've got to label our content certain ways or else they'll breach us. They'll, like, it'll be a breach of terms of service. Just another thing. Too late on his head. Too late to find him. He dropped. Aim's on point. I do my best. 
Uh, all right. There were shots this way as well, so I don't want to run in on Rambo's. Reset. Reset. I need to get my charging cable.
restroom. And then we'll go back to shoreline. Need grenades. And I need to top up my bullets. I don't have any more. Did you he resets in forty three seconds? Really now. That's weird. Sorry. Uh. 
А, вот тут, короче, друган мой бывал точно. Ну и что, нормально? That's over with. I didn't realize I was in burst fire still um, with the MP5.
have to cut stream short. My nieces get up early. They get up at nine. I'll have to cut the stream short. I'm the only one here to watch them. Middle. The wish. Someone finally bought my Lettex. Thank God. Thank God. We were getting very, very, very poor. <clears throat> 400K. And then, yeah, no shot. We're just going to run um, Packers. And shit, it's gonna be great. Um, you know what, chat? I don't really feel up to this today. So I'm going to call it there. We'll call this a short stream. Mind the dog and my nieces. I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Hey, everyone that stopped by and hung out. Those are awesome. Everyone has a wonderful day. I'll return tomorrow morning. <laughs>